I'm such a slurper. I'm always scared about burning my tongue, so I slurp my coffee so much to see if it's hot, which I don't think actually works well, but that's what I do. I'm obsessed with this little ghost mug, but we're here to talk about books, so let's do some fall books. It is Monday morning, and I wanted to read fall books for the week. I wanted to feel the fall, love the fall spirit. The leaves are just starting to change here, so it's not very fall yet, but I figured what better way to get you in the mood for fall than to just like romanticize it and, you know, pull out your fall decor, your fall colors, grab some coffee with a little bit of pumpkin spice, and read some books that just remind you of fall and bring those fall vibes. We're also going to probably be doing a bunch of fall activities this week and just really put ourselves in the mood for all things fall and autumnal because this is, I think, literally everyone on the planet can agree that fall is the perfect season. There's just something so like dreamy about it and it's, I think, the mood that comes with it. Like, yes, summer is fun and everyone I feel like loves summer or winter is fun, but fall I feel like everyone just knows there's so many activities to do. It's just like such a beautiful season and I, I don't know, everyone loves fall. That's, that's all I'm saying here. Everybody loves fall. So in this video I'll be reading two fall fantasy books. They are both indie books, indie fantasies. As we know on this channel I love indies and both of these just I feel like screamed fall. I didn't plan for them both to be indie but it just really worked that way and I love an indie book so I'm not complaining. The first one is The Winds of Strife by Yuji Gutman. This was kindly sent to me the, by the author when he saw that I had it on one of my Kindle TBRs and he reached out and asked if I'd want a physical copy in exchange for an honest review and obviously that does change any of my thoughts and feelings throughout this video. They're all true to me. I don't change anything. If you know me, I have been brutally harsh to some books in the past. It doesn't matter if they're sent to me for review or not. If I don't like a book, I didn't like a book and that's, that's the truth. So uh, I hope you enjoy watching me hopefully fall in love with this book and I'm very excited for it. It was on a TBR like before I even got a copy, right? Like I was interested in this book before. So I feel like that adds to like the magic of it that I'm just like really excited to read it. Also Mel from Melanor Reads has read it and she really enjoyed it. So I'm very excited because our tastes are quite similar. This one follows our main character who is part of the witch hunters, but he's actually joined the witch hunters in order to take them down. But it's been like a bunch of years since he joined with his revenge purpose and he's done things that he regrets in order to get to this position where he's able to take them down. I think there's gonna be a lot of discussions on different sides of things and what being like pulled into something can do to you and your mindset and how easy it is to like become something different and to follow a group. I'm really excited to see what this book says and what we talk about and um, I'm just really excited for it. And there's witches and witches are like perfect for autumnal. This is that kind of season. It is very beautiful. And the second one will be A Touch of Light by Thiago Abdullah. I'm sorry if I said that wrong. Which was kindly sent to me by one of my subscribers and I like to call a friend. Dom from Dominish Books. Dom absolutely adored this book. This book just made it to the semi-finalist in Spiffbo 8 and I think it's gonna be a great read. I really know nothing besides that there's griffins in this book and I know it follows a couple different protagonists and... I don't know, I have high hopes for this book with zero expectations. Like, I know nothing about this book other than there's griffins, but I feel like I'm gonna love it. Both of these books have the capability to be five-star reads for me, and I think that's the perfect way to start fall and autumnal vibes. And I actually have read the prologue to Winds of Strife, so I'm gonna update you on those thoughts. But first, I wanted to show you the little fall activity we got up to on Saturday. I hadn't started this vlog yet, but I wanted to show, share with you what me and Nick did because it's the perfect fall activity in my mind. And here you go. Ooh, it's windy, so I don't even know if you're gonna be able to hear me. Um, but I don't know how fall this is, but technically when it becomes fall, it gets a little colder, so it's time for like some campfires. And my boyfriend's family growing up always made these things called bush pies. Now, I think I've probably had one when I was young, but like it wasn't a staple in my house, but it's a staple over here and I don't remember them. So I'm trying my first bush pie and we'll take you through the makings of it. Uh, we have a little, a little fire going. <laughs> Woodsman Nick. And then a little plate of food and it goes into like these little thingies over here and then it goes onto the fire kind of like a s'more so it's like a big camping thing and I feel like that's fall so I figured I would take you along with me as I made and ate a bush pie. Do you want your saucy saucy? 
I like a saucy. I don't know. It's good. I think it needs more cheese. More cheese. But it's good. Oh. In order to get the full experience, I need to finish it off with a beer. And gooey. Yeah, okay. Jebby, you're up. Spread your legs so that if you miss, you don't chop your toes off. Okay. I'm so scared. Swing now. Oh, you're back. I hope you really enjoyed eating some, well, watching me eat some delicious bush pies and that little bit of a fall activity. Fire is just scream fall to me and I'm very excited to have a couple this season and really just like warm up with a blanket typically and some good fire roasted food. It's one of my favorite activities for fall but also summer is having a campfire in our backyard. Normally we invite some friends over. But anyways, let's update you on this beautiful, beautiful book. I obviously just showed you the cover but look how stunning I feel like that is. The the other thing I really like is we have some really pretty pages. I also absolutely adore this map. I don't know why. I think this I think this map is really really pretty and I love that it's only half a page actually and that when you start the book you can still see it. I also think it's so smart for an indie book where it is a little bit more expensive because you're paying for all the pages in this to do a half page and have it connected to the whatever this thing is called the title page. Honestly shout out to all those indie authors who put so much work and money into this. This has an audiobook which I have been listening to and an audiobook is a lot of money so if you have an indie book that you want to read I highly recommend supporting the author and buying the audiobook or the physical edition that they put so much work and effort into. So self-pub books are so much different than a traditionally published book in terms of the fact that this book was made a heart tears soul by the author. Obviously traditional books the authors put in a lot of work, a lot of effort, a lot of time still, but the author in an indie in a self-pub book has to pay for everything. It comes out of their own account. They have no traditional publisher to put the money behind it, to market it properly, to have a million different editions, to have someone, have an audiobook created because audiobooks are so expensive. Like the author really puts all of their money into something, the design artist, everything. And the quality of the paper, they have to pay for paper and there's cheaper paper than others, which is why I think a lot of indie books are that like stark white. This one's not. And yeah, I just think that they put so much effort into these and we should support them because of that. I love traditionally published books too. I'm not here to like say that people don't put a lot of effort into them. I just wanted to really shout out the time and the money it takes to make an indie book. Uh, anyways, I've read the prologue of this book and if you know me, you know I love a prologue. I always talk about prologues, especially in my indie vlogs, just because I feel like indie authors do prologues better than traditional authors. I don't know. I think that maybe that publishers have a set like amount of page counts or like an idea for what a prologue should be. And since a self published or indie author doesn't have that they just like get to experiment a little bit more i would give this prologue probably a four out of five i really really enjoyed it it was a really good way to set us up the way it was done it was like a little bit of info dumping but not a lot like not too much so you're being told so much about the world while being part of like something like that's happening like there's tension building because in our prologue i don't think it's a spoiler because it's the prologue in our prologue our our character her, there's someone coming to burn her down because she's a witch and she just had a baby and so she wants to protect the baby and so she's kind of explaining what happened to get her to this point in her life while like hearing this person outside and having this build of tension and I really enjoyed that. I feel like it really set the stakes for what this book can be from the very start. One thing I'm kind of iffy about, I think that's why it got oh, 4 out of 5 instead of 5 out of 5 for the prologue, is 
that it tells you who the chosen one is right off the bat. I'm not the biggest fan of that, even though typically going into a fantasy book, you know that your protagonist is the chosen one. I don't know why it's like a little like thing in me that I want to not be outright told. I want to like slowly find out with our main character that they are the chosen one. I don't want to know before they know that they're the chosen one. I don't know if that makes sense to you. I don't think it was done terribly in this, so... Uh, I, I can't fault it for it. I think that it actually added to the prologue and to why these things were happening so I get why we were told this. So I get it. I get I get why it was done and I can't fault the book for it but it's just my personal preference to have not been told right away. But who knows where this book is going because honestly I think the chosen one was a girl and I'm pretty sure our protagonist is a guy because only girls are witches. Well, in this world, only girl witches are seen as bad, but like guys who can use the power aren't bad. So I'm, I'm a little confused, but like excited, excited. I think that that added to my anticipation for the story and I'm just very excited to continue. And I've been talking about this prologue for so freaking long. So let's just get on into reading and I'll see you guys soon with an update. Good morning. I did some reading and I did some calculations. In order to read Winds of Strife and A Touch of Light for the vlog to go up on Saturday, I will have to read 200 pages a day at least. And I failed miserably at that yesterday because I ended up purchasing Disney Streamlight Valley and instead of reading, I ended up playing that. And yeah, I'm sure that that will probably happen again. But I'm trying to catch up today and I read literally nothing other than like one chapter yesterday so today I'm binge reading. I made it to page 126 already and I'm excited about this book. I have some thoughts, I have some feelings, and I have some conversations to discuss. One thing I'm liking about this book is one there is the surprise for me of it not being a one protagonist story. We have our mail which is the one that they talk about on the back so I assumed that the whole story was told in his protagonist because he's the only one really mentioned. His name is Nye and he is a witch hunter but then we also have his witch companions that he's been like saving over the years. Kind of. And we have their POVs too as well as the princess who is the chosen one we are told about from the very start. And so it was very surprising in a good way for me because I love a multi POV story so I'm really excited about that. Another thing I've really been enjoying is I think the discussions that can come out of this book about morally grey characters and what a morally grey character is because this character is doing the wrong things for the right reasons. He's killing people in order to take down the whole regime and to make the world a better place at some point. But obviously right now he's doing the wrong things. Now I think in some people's mind this would automatically put him as a morally grey character and I do think it puts him on like the scale of morally grey characters. But for me, I'm not sure how morally grey I think he is because he always knows it's the wrong thing. And I don't know what it is, I love a like a morally grey character who like is like doing the, this wrong thing but but his reason is like solely the right reason. Like he's doing it for this reason and he thinks that is good but it could have been done a different way. Where with this character he goes to like murder someone and he's like sitting here and he's like I need to stop killing. I need to stop killing. This is not okay. This is not right. But like it's gonna get me from point A to point B. So I don't know. I think that there just becomes a discussion on what a morally great character consists of and I think that I would put him on the spectrum but I think he's lower on the spectrum for me because of those that thought process of dang this is bad. There's also literally a line in here that talks about how doing evil deeds for the right reason still makes you evil which I thought was very interesting and I love that it's kind of talking about these things. It's also discussing his like savior complex as the fact that he kills people's parents but then saves the kid because they're not yet a witch but they have the ability to maybe become one and they probably will become one because their parents were murdered and all the other witch hunters would have killed the kids but he's he's better than them because he's saving the kids and I think that obviously kind of not really it also has been brought this interesting conversation on is he better than them because he's doing this? Is he a better person because he's willing to save someone where in the regime you're taught not to save them? Well, you're kind of given freedom but most of them just kill them. And I just think that there's a lot of like hot topics coming up and discussions. The author is doing a really good job of discussing them, discussing them in the book with like the young character who doesn't know whether to hate this guy for killing his mom or love him for saving her. 
I'm really intrigued to see that struggle and these witches that hate him but also need him and it's it's just a very interesting situation. The authors put so many thoughts in this book. We have a little note, um, I dog-eared a page where we talked about words and what words are in the world. So like if something didn't happen we would never have these words. So things that are we say because of something that happened. So in this they have something called the drowning that happened and how language is influenced by big events. So now they always say drown right or they say ocean's mercy because they had this experience with the ocean coming and drowning all these people. So now it's like, oh, ocean's mercy. And I just thought that that was so interesting and such a beautiful small little note to put into a book about how language matters and how it's affected by our thoughts, our experiences, what happens within the world. And yeah, I'm really enjoying the author's writing style and I'm finding the little evil voice inside of his head really interesting. I do think it's a little heavy-handed for my own personal liking, but as this is a debut, I'm okay with letting that slide a little bit because I'm enjoying it more than the heavy-handed is getting to me. And yeah, in case I didn't realize, didn't say it, there is the, our protagonist is like going insane from murdering all these people and he's got like a, a voice inside of his head. I'm um, also, you, you scared the living shit out of me. <laughs> And in terms of the magic system, I am finding the magic system very intriguing, very unique. It's done on basis of emotions and the pull of emotions and the intensity of your emotions creates how much power you have. But the more intense your emotion is, the slower it is to like rebuild that power back up. So our protagonist is very mellow headed and because he's a little bit insane he can switch between his emotions very easily but they're never very intense but he can always have powers and he's much quicker on the draw than other the other witch hunters because he has such a mellow and calm exterior where lots of the other ones like he's not all powerful because he cannot get that emotional extreme and I'm really enjoying that. Also the book has like these little like thingies where it's breaking down the description of like a category of witches or a category of magic and it happens within every couple chapters and I really like that you get like um this is probably a better one to show you get like the drawing but then you also just get like the table so it's like easier to read but I think that is really cool of the author and just another little touch I'm really enjoying this but I need coffee so let's go to a Starbucks run do I stir it or I just drink you it? just drink this it this one doesn't look as like intense Nick's never had a pumpkin cream cold brew before, so here's his first one. Is it too sweet for you? It's very foamy. Um, could be a little less sweet, but if I was in the right mood for it, it would be good. I'm always in the right mood for it. Cheers! <laughs> so weird. I just had an eye seizure. My eyes just. Okay. That's our, our fall drink, it's my favorite fall drink. Pumpkin cream cold brew from Starbucks is elite. And I do not like a pumpkin spice latte. Pumpkin spice la latte is not good. Pumpkin cream cold brew. I feel like yours got way more cream than mine. Like fall, or like Pumpkin cream cold though. Hi, it's Wednesday. I really failed yesterday in terms of my reading goal of 200 pages, which actually was 400 pages yesterday. I read about 200, so I'm about 50% of the way through this book when I was supposed to only have about 100 pages left of it. But I did other productive things. I got suckered and really excitedly, I ended up helping my sister build a puzzle table. Now this is like a coffee table for her that will have a drawer with her puzzle pieces and then the table lid will come off and underneath there's like another table that's like space for the puzzle. So like you'll have a coffee table a puzzle table and like a drawer for the puzzle and it's just so, like her cat won't get in the way and won't like knock over her puzzle and you know do do the cat thing so that means that today I need to finish this chunker I need to finish it because I need to read a touch of light Thursday Friday to get this video up for you Saturday which me and schedules tell me to do one thing I'm gonna go do the other but anyways I guess I should talk to you about this and put my chai tea latte down this is my Starbucks drink in the fall when I am craving something sweet it's an iced chai tea latte half sweet with pumpkin cream cold foam on top it's really really sweet and I only crave it when I'm in the mood for like sugar and 
yeah, this is delicious. And it kind of reminds me of eggnog. So it's like my fall holiday drink. I don't know if that makes sense. Like it's like, it, it makes me a little excited for November because I love eggnog. Winds of Strife, I have thoughts. I'm really enjoying this book and I'm not mad that it's taking me longer to read this book because it's letting me like sit in my thoughts and sit in my feelings with this. This book is a book that reminds me of books like The Poppy War, Rage of Dragons, Nomads of the Sea, where they're books that I enjoy because of the thought process that goes along with them. Yes, I love them for their enjoyment and the ride they take me on, but I also love the discussions, the conversations, the thoughts I have to think throughout reading it, and yeah, I don't know. I, I've really, really loved this one so far. Okay, so let's talk more thoughts. Now that I'm at page 270. I'm on chapter 20, so I'm like literally 50% into this. There ended up being more characters welcomed into this world. We're getting a couple more POVs, which I actually really enjoyed because I think they added to that depth of what a grimdark character is because in this, yes, we have Nyx, who is the our protagonist who I talked about early, or how he's not really morally gray, but is morally gray. We also have the king, and the king is bad. You look at the king and you go, you are persecuting women. You are a terrible person. Then we get a POV in his head, and I'm like, but he's scared. Like, at least he's doing it because he's so scared. Like, he full-on thinks that women witches are the reason that night is getting longer and longer and we're gonna be in eternal darkness. Like, he's so scared. And, like, you also have him, like, wanting to protect his civilization. Like, he's not willing to burn down everyone. Like, you see, you glimpse the good in him, even though he's a bad character. Like, he, he's an evil man and he does, he does bad things. But I think he does them for what he thinks is the right reason, which I think puts him in morally gray area for me. Although they aren't actually the right reason, he thinks they are. And I enjoyed that. And then, so, like... You take him and he looks he looks so he looks bad but like you can understand him there which I love a character that does things that like I'm like why are you doing those but like I understand why you got there from their past and their experiences I could see how that would twist someone into believing and doing these things I love a character like that like Rin like Tao yes and then we have this other POV that is a guy that has no redeeming qualities. He's so dark. He's so bad. He just, he's power hungry, wants to kill everyone. So when you read his POV after the king, the king looks really good comparatively. But then we have a little, little witch who's young, like a little young girl who's a witch who obviously hates the king because of those, of, of fair reasons about being, her mother was killed under this regime, blah, 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 blah. And the king looks really bad again. And I think it just, this is what I love about a multi pov character story, is that you're seeing more than one side. You're seeing how one person could be the villain, the hero, the victim within a whole story. You can see how it's so multifaceted. Like there's, it's not just right or wrong. It's not just black or white. There's just like, it's it's interpretive and I think that's what real life is as humans we only see what we want to see and we're very like one-dimensional in our eyesight and if I told a story and you told a story the same story our stories would be completely different you know the saying that there's always more than one side to a story there's two sides to every story each person tells it to glorify themselves a little bit so I just I really really like that in a multi-character story and I think this story is doing it really well we actually have a whole discussion of whether Nyx is the hero, the villain, or the victim in the story, and I'm loving, loving, loving that discussion, as you can tell, because I've been talking about it forever. Another thing, I, the one thing that I'm a little unsure about, there's a little struggle I'm having, is with the magic system. I love the magic system, and I do think it's a harder magic system than I expected, but I'm struggling with the bounds of the magic system. So in Mistborn, we have characters who can use the magic, but they have to like, if they can use the magic, they have to like digest the metal. And when they burn up that metal, they out of power. They're out of power, you know? And in this one, since we're harnessing feelings and emotions, I'm confused when that ends. Like, yes, I get if I have a stronger emotion, it'll be more powerful, but I can be angry for days. Can I then use the power of flames? Because like uh, if anger, if you're angry, you can make flames your pyromancer. Can I then make flames for three days straight because I'm angry for for three days straight? When does that stop? Like when, when does the power fail? Like I just want a little bit more like bounds on what the power is 
and like capable of and that is probably my really really big negative of this since I'm struggling a little bit with the magic system just because I want it to be a little more hard I want a little more set rules to it but we are learning a lot about the magic system as we go it's not as like upfront here are the rules here's what it is you're kind of learning with characters I think that this book would have really benefited from maybe a school setting or like training so we are kind of training one character but we're training the chosen one who is just good at everything which I'm then happy that they told me she's the chosen one because now I know why she's good at everything and yeah and like, there's a reason for her being good at everything because they really explained that in the prologue but yeah that's my biggest issue as is I'm just struggling with the bounds of the magic system other than that I'm really enjoying it I'm really interested to see where it goes and I, I'm sitting at four stars I'm 100% sitting at four stars I am and, and like look there's like a little design at the chapters I I'm really impressed with how much was put into this book and yeah I think that's my only critique and what I was loving um I'm gonna hopefully update you tonight I am going flower picking tonight so I'm probably gonna take you along with me and we're just like picking the last of the flowers before fall completely comes and it's not very fall it's actually more summer but you get to come with me because why not and yeah um I will see you in a bit when I have an update hope you enjoyed coming to the flower picking with us but I have about two hours left in the audiobook so that's what I'm going to spend the rest of my night doing because it's already 10 o'clock and I need to get on that because I need to finish this for everyone. I have one quick thought that I wanted to put in here before we switch on into like probably tomorrow. I'm probably not going to update you again tonight. It'll probably be tomorrow and hopefully I'll be done Winds of Strife and can start a touch of light for you. The one thing that I was thinking about is Lots of this book is done through gimmicks and a lot of the storytelling is done through gimmicks. So if you're something who doesn't like something like that, you might not like it. I do find it a little heavy handed, but not completely. Not enough to like make me not like it. But most of the storytelling is either done through the voice in his head. So he'll like kind of talk to that voice in his head to tell you the narrative. Or it's done a lot of like, a lot of things have happened through like passion fueled power so if you're if you can like use if you can harness passion you could like make like almost illusions out of light so sometimes like we'll get like a throwback story of like this person's backstory it's happened twice through the illusions that this person can create and we'll like almost like start up this illusion and then we'll dive into like you know like in like a show when they do that and it's like a flashback that's kind of what I picture this is doing it's what it's trying to do I don't mind it, but I don't love it. So I would like to see this be improved on in future books in the series where maybe some of the like narrative happens not through these gimmicks. I need less like talking to the voice in your head, less flashbacks through illusions, but I'm still really enjoying it. I'm still sitting at a four star. So that's all I had to update you on. I will see you in the morning because I am going to read and then go to bed and take all my makeup off. So good night. It's Thursday night and I just finished Winds of Strife. I am really behind my reading schedule, which I actually think means that I'm gonna put this vlog up on Sunday instead of Saturday. Give myself a little bit of room to read a little bit more, but I'm a little bit torn on what to give this. I think I'm gonna give it a four star, although at one point I was sitting at probably more of a 3.5, but I do think it deserves that four star because I am so impressed with this book. This book, talks about so many subject matters that are deep and it does it in such a beautiful way. And the ending has me so excited to pick up the next book. I do know in the author's note he does say that the next book does deal with some domestic abuse and I'm 
interested to see how he does that because I think he does so many discussions well in this one and I'm really interested in seeing his work continue. I loved so much about this book. There are some things I wish it had more of. I wish the characters had just a little bit more depth to them. I think it's hard when your main character is insane <laughs> to give us that depth, which is why I think I'm still giving it a four star because like he does everything else so well and I can see why it's hard to like our main character is just surface level because he's he's literally going insane. So it's like hard to like dive deeper into him and understand him better because he doesn't even understand himself. And yeah, I just really enjoyed that. I do wish the magic system had a little bit more bounds to it, but I do think that I understood it a little bit more since last time we talked. As I continue to read, I do think that I'm still unsure how I feel about it since like pretty much anyone can just like use, harness their magic and if they learn how to do it. I really would like like a training sequence to like really see how it works. Although there is a fight scene in this, a little battle between like glitter against Nye and I loved that fight scene because I really got to see how the magic was used. And I do think it's just such an interesting magic system but I do think it has its weaknesses because of how interesting it is and because of the fact that you're just harnessing emotion. Where does that emotion stop? I do think hatred and that emotion Emotion, I really liked because that had a bound. That had a bound of like being limitless until it kills you and I thought that was super cool. I also really enjoyed the epilepsy. That's what it's called, right? The little, the little note before the chapter and how they were kind of like giving you lessons that our main character had learned when he was in school. And at the back of the book, there is the circle and a bunch of those little things too and like e excerpts from the books. And I really, really liked the epilogue. And I don't know, I'm just, after finishing this, I just wish I had the second book. I wish my I had my hands on it and I wish I could continue it because like this wraps up so nicely, but also leaves so much open. And I'm just really excited and I'm really glad I read this and I don't know, I have nothing really else to say. I feel like I'm forgetting to say things besides that I really enjoyed it and I hope that other people pick it up, especially if you like deeper books, books with like conversations. If you like my taste in books, pick it up. I, I'm just really happy I read it and thank you to the author for sending it to me and just thanks to Mel for liking it which made me want to pick it up faster and all these other things and I now hope all of you pick it up so that we can talk about it because I do think that this would be such an interesting book club pick because you could discuss so many things with it and I can't give spoilers away so I feel like I can't discuss a lot of these things but there's just so much to talk about and I think there's things to theorize about in this and I'm excited so yeah you should definitely pick this up and I'm gonna stop talking because I need to start a touch of light because it's Thursday night. So definitely I'm giving this one a good old four stars and I'll update you in a bit. I read the prologue and the first chapter of this since we last talked like <laughs> 10 minutes ago and I don't really have a lot of thoughts. All I think so far is that this book really just like throws you in. The prologue to be honest felt kind of like chapter one to me. It didn't it could have just been like the start of the story. I don't know why it was called a prologue. It could have just been chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, but maybe I'm missing something and it'll all make more clear as it goes along why it was the prologue. Either way, I still liked it. I didn't like this prologue as much as I enjoyed Winds of Strife's prologue. I think I would put the prologue at a three out of five stars just because it left me very confused. It didn't like tell me that much. Besides it set the stakes for like a war, someone's dead, and there's like religion. But other than that, that's like kind of all I got out of it. I am excited to continue and read because like chapter one had me a little bit more intrigued and I think chapter two is from a new POV so I'm excited to see that happen. I'm excited. I don't have a lot of thoughts. Just that you get thrown right on into things. Like there's no like setup, plot, vomit, world building. It's just, just, here you go. Let's start reading and let's go. So yeah, I'm going to continue reading. I probably won't update you again tonight just because I'm getting really tired. So I think it'll be a Friday update and we'll see how far I get into this on Friday to see if I need to continue the vlog on into Saturday and put it Sunday up instead of Saturday. I don't know. We'll see how quick of a read this is for me. I've made it to chapter seven and I am intrigued. We have set up a couple different characters. So we have the 
golden son of the king has been killed and now the next son in line has to like live up to this golden son's memory and is kind of struggling to do it and there's a bunch of political relations family relations religious relations going on and tying into things in that pov but you're definitely seeing like the politics a lot in that then we have this old I forgot what she's called, but I'm gonna call her like, I think she's like part of the religion and she's hearing voices in her head, which actually has to do with the magic system, which is really cool. I think that there's like other people inside of her, but she's like crazy. So that one's really cool. I'm really intrigued by her her first POV, which is like in the prison that she like puts herself in and she's like saving people from death was super cool. Then we have this other girl who's in this village that like has gone through like the proving and she has three stripes, but she has, she's like cursed and she's hearing other people's like emotions and they like affect her. And that one's also super cool. So I'm really excited with the setup that has happened here. And I think it's going to be a good book. I'm actually really excited. It, it was definitely like, even though it threw you in, I felt like it was a slow start because of that. Because I was like, okay, there's a lot happening. I need to sort the shit out. And now I have sorted my shit out. <laughs> and I'm really, really liking it. Very excited that I might have two very, very highly loved books in this vlog. Like, I loved Winds of Strife. So if I can also love A Touch of Light, which I think... I will. That is success at its finest. But yeah, I just figured I would update you on kind of what I was feeling. I've gotten to page 197. I think I'm at about 40% in. I am really liking this book. I think this book is very technically strong. It's very well written. I couldn't give you any negatives on the writing style. I'm really enjoying it. It's a four star. It's reminding me of the writing style of Illborn quite a bit. And I see a lot of resemblances in the books just because they're both very religion heavy and about like religious, it's about religious zealots and like a lot of that fun stuff that, <laughs> but a lot of that stuff that comes with religion and talking about extremes of religion. This is so unique, I think, and it's very interesting. I would normally be the most interested in that military son of a king political POV, but I am least interested in that POV and I'm always so excited to get to the two other characters. The priestess thingy, not, I don't even think she's a priestess. She's a rogue elite warrior is what it's called in here. Hiding from her past is like my most interesting one, but I also really, really love our Nasha, who is our gifted hunter in the village that has like that curse. I find their POVs equally as interesting. And then when I get to Adrian's POV, I'm a little bit like, now I'm here again, which in like the best way possible because I'm still excited to be in his POV. It's just like the others are so great compared to his. I'm sitting at a four star. I'm really enjoying it. It's a little bit drier than Winds of Strife. I think there's two types of books. There's books that are very technically strong that you love. And then there's books that just for some reason, your enjoyment, it just, it's a ride and it takes you on. And not that Winds of Strife isn't technically strong, but I definitely saw a lot more weaknesses in the writing than I do in this one. But I think I was swept farther away and like emotionally connected to that story a little bit more than I am to this story. The characters, I just have having a bit of a hard time like connecting with, but I'm still loving it. And I think that there's potential to change that. At this moment in time, you could kill off any of these three characters and I don't think it would gut wrench me. Where in Winds of Strife, if you had killed someone off, I probably would have been like, eh, my babies. And <laughs> in this one, it's just like not there yet. But I do think that there is the possibility of getting there, especially with Nasha. I think that I'm gonna be protective over her at some point. But yeah, other than that, I'm really excited. We got a glimpse of maybe a griffin, but I have not seen any griffins yet. I've obviously been selling the story because there's a griffin in it. I'm very excited to get to that griffin. And just the magic system in general, I can't really say anything about it. There's just like our one elite warrior can like use different powers and she's got like silver eyes when she uses them. It's very interesting. And then there's like a disease coming from those who don't worship the right god and just a lot's happening and i'm just very interested in it and i'm very excited to continue and there's my update for now i'll try to update you tonight because it's still friday i have it's like 5 p.m so i'm gonna try and finish this tonight to get this vlog to you guys tomorrow <laughs> wish me luck i showered and my hair is wet but i'm trying to get this vlog out to you because it is saturday morning and i have finished the book so i'm going to talk to you edit upload and hopefully get to my wedding on time <laughs> Five stars, guys. Five freaking stars.
I adored this book. I didn't update you a lot because I was just like enjoying it so much that I had, I had no thoughts because I was just like sucked into the world and like, ooh, what's gonna happen next? I loved this book. There are, I was, I was gonna come on here and tell you that I wish there had been a little bit more of an emotional impact with some of the characters, but then I was thinking about it and I was like, that's false because I was emotionally connected to Lynn and I was emotionally connected to Nasha. I wasn't to Adrian, but I full on think the writing's supposed to make you feel that way because he's so like solely based on his mission. Like that's his only thought process is what he has to do to save whatever's happening. A Touch of Light by Chiago Abdullah is about a world where there's like this disease, I don't wanna call it a disease. What's that called? It's like a pandemic. Oh, yes, yes. Thanks, Nick. <laughs> uh, it's about this world where there's this plague happening and when someone gets the plague, sometimes they fall into utter madness and essentially act like a zombie and start to like kill everyone. But not everyone falls as quickly into madness. Some can like restrain it, some can beat it, and some just never get it. And essentially we're trying to fight off the madness. We're trying to like stop it from spreading. And something I really loved about this book was that all three POVs inter even though they had their own arcs to go on they all interconnected and you could see how they were interconnecting and i really enjoyed that i mean i didn't see it until the like halfway but like when i hit halfway something clicked and i was like oh they're all they are all connected which was one of my biggest negatives about illborn and i would probably compare this to illborn just because it does have that like drier writing and like this whole religion impact because this is also the religion in this has a whole impact because people like believe in their savior and if you die in this world if you are chosen by their god uh you can be covered in the sap that will like preserve your body to come alive at the again at the new dawn or whatever it's called when the savior comes back and is like resurrected there's a whole impact of religion in this and what belief is and there are griffins I thought there wasn't enough griffins in this and maybe like I'd wish I had known more about the griffins earlier on but I can't tell you that it wasn't said because something about Chiago's writing is it is so technically strong but he just throws you in there is no info dumps he's just like you know the meme <laughs> well you know like the meme that's like come in losers we're going shopping and then there's like a new meme saying like come in losers we're saving halloween town i feel like that's come in losers we're saving this kingdom because like it's just like okay we're, we're now in this taxi and we're going to save i don't know if any of that made any sense to you guys but it, it did for me <laughs> he just like throws you in he, so there are explanations of things but they're small and sometimes you miss them, but they all end up coming together at the end. I really enjoy a story like this where I'm just like carried away by it. And I, uh, there are, he just like dives you into the plot. There's no like real explanation of things in the terms of like a Sanderson, but you do get it at some point and it does all make sense to you. I enjoy a story like this. With this story, all the reveals surprise me, even though I think on reread you'd be able to point how they're they're coming together but like for this time I was like oh 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 and I'm just really excited to see where this story goes if this is Chiago's debut I, I can't explain the excitement I have for all his other books because you know with an author's debut typically they get way better as they go especially from the first to second I find there's just like a really big incline in their writing this was incredible. This, this was, this is insane and everyone should pick it up. It's a five star read and I'm so excited that I read it and I loved it and it is perfect for fall. And yeah, please pick this up, read it. And Winds of Strife. I really liked both. Uh, so there's the end of this vlog. I can't really recap you both of these. I just loved both of them. So you should pick up both of these books that I read in this vlog because they are both incredible and they're both indie and we love an indie. So I'll see you next week. Next week, I'm honestly not sure what's coming to you guys uh, in terms of content. It's either vampire vlog or we might be pivoting and doing a necromancer vlog which was never originally on the table but I need to read Sabriel so that that might happen or it'll be the vampire vlog so look out for either one of those and if you'd like to connect with me on other... Blah, 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 blah. 
And if you'd like to connect with me on other platforms, my books room, my book Twitter, my Goodreads, and my Patreon all linked in the description bar below. Have yourselves a spooktacular day.